Henry W. Grady, who was born in Georgia in 1851, died in 1889. He was one of the most brilliant journalists and orators of what has been termed the New South. He was editor of the Atlanta Constitution for a number of years and made it one of the influential newspapers of the country. His most famous speech was delivered before the New England Society at its annual dinner in New York City, December the 12th, 1886. After drawing a graphic picture of the South as it was left by the Great War and of its honest acceptance of the result of that terrific struggle, he made a masterly plea for full reconciliation and comradeship, closing with the following eloquent words. This message, Mr. President, comes to you from consecrated ground. Every foot of soil about the city in which I live is sacred as a battleground of the Republic. Every hill that invests it is hallowed to you by the blood of your brothers who died for your victory, and doubly hallowed to us by the blood of those who died hopeless but undaunted in defeat. Sacred soil to all of us, rich with memories that make us purer and stronger and better. A silent but staunch witness in its red desolation of the matchless glory of American hearts and the deathless glory of American arms. A speaking and eloquent witness in its white peace and prosperity to the indissoluble union of American states and the imperishable brotherhood of the American people. Now what answer has New England to this message? Will she permit the prejudice of war to remain in the hearts of the conquerors when it has died in the hearts of the conquered? Will she transmit this prejudice to the next generation that in their hearts which never felt the generous ardor of conflict it may perpetuate itself? Will she withhold save in strained courtesy the hand which straight from his soldier's heart Grant offered to Lee at Appomattox? Will she make the vision of a restored and happy people which gathered above the couch of your dying captain, filling his heart with grace, touching his lips with praise, and glorifying his path to the grave? Will she make this vision on which the last sigh of his expiring soul breathed a benediction. A cheat and a delusion? If she does, the South, never abject in asking for comradeship, must accept with dignity its refusal. But if she does not refuse to accept in frankness and sincerity this message of goodwill and friendship, then will the prophecy of Webster, delivered in this very society 40 years ago amid tremendous applause, become true, be verified in its fullest sense when he said, standing hand to hand and clasping hands, we should remain united as we have been for 60 years, citizens of the same country, members of the same government, united, all united now and united forever. There have been difficulties, contentions, and controversies, but I tell you that in my judgment, those opened eyes, which like the meteors of a troubled heaven, all of one nature, of one substance bred, did lately meet in the intestine shock, shall now in mutual well-beseeming ranks march all one way.